Um, you know, we're through six practices yesterday. Uh, we were off today. We tested for COVID today and really just had meetings and walk through, which is uh, I really like the spreading, you know, the camp out. I, you know, Sedaris Hutchinson and I were talking about, you know, being able to practice two days and have an off day. And it's kind of like spring ball almost. You're able to go back and rehash some things that you need to improve on. Uh, and we certainly have a lot of things to improve on, but uh, uh, I, you know, pretty pleased so far through six. Uh, tomorrow, a lot of situational work. Uh, we'll work one minute with a field goal to win the game, one minute for the touchdown to win the game. And you look at it, uh, you know, 10 conference games, we probably will have five to seven games that'll come down to the last drive, offensively needing a score, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown, defensively need to make a stop, offense staying on the field in a four-minute situation, grinding the clock. You go back and look at 2017. I talked to our players about this morning. You know, we were 6-1 and one in one-score games, and that's – Obviously, coaching very well in those situations, uh, putting your players in positions to be successful, and uh, and your players executing at a high level. And a lot of that comes back to discipline. Uh, some of the things I talked to him after practice number six was disappointed with how we handled some things there. Uh, well, a lot of third down tomorrow and end of game situations will be in helmets on Friday, uh, and then Saturday we will go to the stadium for some scrimmage snaps. It will not all be live, but some will be live and some thud. Uh, but but we will have full operation. Coach Bobo will be in the box uh, and full sideline operation as far as our coaches are concerned uh, and our players as well. You know, injury-wise, obviously the disappointing news with Marshawn Lloyd uh, was running down the field and just made a cut. Looked like he hyperextended his leg a little bit. He came down, jumped up. You know, genetically he's different from most human beings, and he jumped up and down a couple times and just was fine. And I didn't think anything of it and jogged off the field. Uh, we needed to do an MRI, and Clint Haggard came to me and said he had torn his ACL. That's it. There's no other issues in the knee. Uh, so from that standpoint, we're fortunate. Uh, you know, generally, our protocol is to have Dr. Guy and Clint talk to the student athlete and the parents, and then I call uh, just to kind of confirm where we are with things. And you know, to to attest to Marshawn's maturity and uh, his mental toughness was, you know says to me, and I, as I said to him, I'm so sorry, he said, Coach, this was supposed to happen. You know, God willing, this happened to me, and I'm going to handle it. Uh, and that's just the type of young man he is. He's in a very good mental place right now. His mama, Nashawn, and his grandmother came to town Sunday and Monday to, to meet with Dr. Guy about where – Everything is. They were very pleased with, uh, you know, our support group here. He's got a great support group at home, uh, and his best football is ahead of him. I can assure you of that. But uh, other than that, we're healthy, uh, and I'll open up for any questions. We we'll use the uh, raise your hand little feature if you would, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. David, with the first one. Hey, Will. Thanks for doing this. Um, have you had any guys, uh, you know, test positive for Corona? Have you had uh, quarantine anybody in the last time we spoke to you? Well, we we tested our team. I don't know the exact date. Eight, the seventeenth. The seventeenth, and we we did have one positive on our entire team, but that was throughout the entire building. We had either right under or over 300 tests, and we had one positive. So um, we tested again today. We test, we'll test. we test once a week until we get to game week, and then we'll test uh, three times a week. Gene Chapikoff. Well, what would you say is uh, your biggest concern so far, um, having gone through this, this far into practice? Well, I think that, you know, you know, several. I think, you know, continuing, you know, out wide at wide out. Shy has been very uh, dependable. Xavier's had a good camp. He's been hobbled a little bit with an ankle, uh, but I think he's continued to come on for us. We need more guys to step up outside. Jalen Brooks has been a, a really, you know, done a really nice job in, in the practices he's been involved in uh, with some explosive plays, but we need to do, continue to have more guys come on. I think the carry on's done some good things. Josh Fan made a couple nice plays uh, yesterday, uh, but we need more of those guys to come on. Rico's a young player. Uh, but we've got to have some guys that can create some explosives outside. Uh, the running back group, obviously, we're dealt a, a blow there with Marshawn. But Zaquandre's done some really good things uh, watching him move around. He's extremely intelligent. He's a, the maturity, you know, it's interesting. I, I called Jimbo. You know, uh, uh, Zaquandre signed with Florida State out of high school. So I called Jimbo just to kind of, hey, you know, what happened? And, and I think sometimes, and Jimbo and, and Jay Graham, they loved him. 
Uh, sometimes when there is a coaching change, the coach that recruits you, uh, the head coach is not there anymore. The head coach that recruits you is not there. The position coach is not there. And, and sometimes young men lose their way a little bit as far as, you know, where, where I am in, in this process and this transition. I think that's what happened with Zaquandre. He's been great. I mean, our guys love him. And, and he's come in the building and works extremely hard, but been very, you know, pleased with him. Deshaun's had some really good days. Uh, you know, as far as our first six practices, Kevin Harris has done a good job, and Rashad Amos is a really talented young player. Uh, needs to continue to come on mentally. Uh, but again, that's kind of, and I met with our leadership group this morning. I emphasized to them, you know, this is the time of camp. You're working into that seventh, eighth, ninth practice where young players, especially, have a hard time continuing to uh, burn and strain and, and, and really push themselves. And really, where you lose more than anything is mentally, it's not physically. So we got to continue to. To push that, we need to be more consistent on the offensive line. Jazz and Turrentine, uh, you know, Jalen Nichols, Ja'Kai Moore, Javon Gwynn, uh, those guys need to be more consistent in what we're doing. Uh, on bottom line, uh, you know, Nick Muse has done a nice job at tight end. We still need to continue to come on at that position. I think up front defensively, J Jabari has had a good camp, Kier Thomas, Zach Pickens, uh, Rick Sanders continues to come on, Alex Huntley as a young player. I've uh, been very pleased with how he's, you know, kind of handled the moment as far as those things. I think uh, Saturday's a big day for everybody, uh, but certainly young guys for the first time in the stadium, uh, seeing how they perform. Aaron Sterling and J.J. have played well on the edges. Brad is playing both Sam and Buck for us. Um, and, and Brad, I think, uh, is, is in the best shape he's been in since he's been here. He's playing well at the point of attack. Uh, Tonka Hemingway as a young player continues to come on. Joe Anderson, uh, we talked about Jordan Birch a little bit. Ernest is still out at linebacker. I do think we'll get him back you know, around that September 7th date as far as that's concerned, which is still three weeks out from the first ball game, which should be plenty of time to, to make sure he's ready to play. Uh, Sherrod Green's been very you know, consistent uh, the last two days, and that's his, it's been his challenge for him, is just playing consistent football down in, down out. Damani, I think, has done a nice job for us, continuing to build depth at the linebacker position and, and to play better at the safety position. We haven't played very well. You know, you really go back, and uh, T. Rob and I were talking last night in 2017, Chris Lamans and D.J. Smith. And that's the best safety play we've had since we've been here. And it's been very inconsistent uh, to this point. We need to play better there. So a lot of concerns. You know, punter position, Kai, has, has been shown a very good leg. Uh, but been inconsistent at times with some things. We're going to do some uh, some live punt on Saturday where we're going to put him under duress a little bit and got to get the ball off. Who will be our punt returner? I don't know yet. Uh, J.C. Horn's done some nice things. Jamie Robinson's done some nice things. Shy Smith, uh, all three of those guys. Who will be our, our kickoff returner? We're going to get a, a live rep on Saturday. Uh, I don't know you know, where we'll go as far as that. Xavier Leggett, uh, Shy Smith, Carrion Joyner. Uh, so, again, there's a lot of question marks in the return game, uh, the punting game, and then some of the things that I hit on, uh, you know, positionally on offense and defense. Colin? Yeah, well, I guess yeah, well, how have you been, been, been in terms of, terms of defensively, defensively fitting, fitting the ball, ball getting the ball, 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 it's kind of the things that you're talking about going into it. Going into it. Just how's that been out there a couple of days of camp? camp, camp. I'm sorry, Colin. I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't uh, understand you. How oh. Yeah. Well, again, that's that's a double-edged sword for the head coach. Uh, the defensive guys are happy about it, and I think we've done a good job the first couple of days. And then offense has done a better job of taking care of the ball the last couple of days. We did have a tip ball interception down in the red zone yesterday, uh, and it was, which was you know obviously extremely disappointing offensively. We've got to get do a better job of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. We're less than 50 percent last year. Uh, which is the worst in the Southeastern Conference, uh, and, and capitalizing our opportunities when we get there. Uh, but I think that we, you know, the guys have understood more defensively about getting their hands on the ball. Uh, and I think for the most part, we've done a pretty good job, uh, you know, up until, you know, the last couple of days. We did have one yesterday, uh, but that was it. Ben? Uh, Will, when you go into that kind of scrimmage situation, what are you looking for first from a, from a team team overall standpoint and then especially from kind of the quarterback position? Well, I think as much as anything, just procedurally, offensively, functioning without issues, self-inflicted wounds, offsides, uh, substitution issues, 
uh, getting the call, getting the correct call in the huddle. Uh, if we're on the line of scrimmage, on the line of scrimmage, the communication details that you got to have offensively and playing a clean game. You know, obviously, would you like to have some explosive plays? Absolutely. Would you like to score a lot of points? Absolutely. But I think in the first scrimmage with the co coaches totally off the field, you know, those that's point one and two, and then the rest you want to, you want to have follow. You know, we need to be an explosive offense defensively. I would say a lot of the same but communication issues to make sure there's not a lot of you know self-inflicted. Uh, problems because of lack of communication, because of lack of substitution, because of lack of awareness of down and distance. Uh, you know, you want to be able to tackle well uh, in situation. We've worked on a lot of tackling drills. We haven't necessarily applied them in a game situation. So there will be some live tackling on Saturday. Uh, so so th those are always important. But I would say, you know, just starting out, that's what you're looking for. And then you got to obviously go from there. You got to have some guys create some explosive plays offensively, some guys get their hands on the ball defensively. And again, like I said before, it's a double edged sword for me. There's part of it that you're excited about, and there's part of it you're going to be really disappointed about as you leave the scrimmage. So, uh, you know, those are all things that I, th I think as you evenly approach things. I think we've made more explosive plays in six practices than we have around here in a long time. Uh, vertically down the, down the field, Mike does a really good job of creating some issues for you defensively. Uh, that you, you're going to create some one-on-ones, and we got to go win our one-on-one -on -one matchups down the field, whether that's on offense as a receiver, that's on defense as a defensive back. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Coach, could you just address kind of what it says about Colin Hill's mental and physical toughness and just his passion for the game, that he has his degree. He certainly could have walked away from football after three ACLs. He's still out here uh, trying to compete and, and, and wants to play the game more than ever. Well, the, in the short time I've gotten to know Colin, uh, and I knew him a little bit in high school when we first got here, we tried to recruit him, and uh, he was loyal to Mike and, and Colorado State. But, um, you know, he's a, he's a competitive, tough guy. Uh, he obviously has a, a, a little bit of a leg up from the standpoint of understanding the system, the terminology, what Mike expects from the quarterback position. Uh, and so from that standpoint, but he is a he is a very competitive, tough guy. And I was standing with Nick Muse the other day, and he said it's one thing coming off one ACL. I can't imagine three. And, and that says a lot about his toughness uh, as far as that's concerned. But it's been really – I've really enjoyed having Colin here and, and what he brings to our program and what he brings to our locker room, uh, what he brings to the quarterback room. I think he's been very good for Ryan. Uh, and I think Ryan's done a, done a really good job of continuing to learn all the different things because Mike puts a lot on the quarterback and he's very demanding of that position. Josh. Even being a new guy, does, does call it a me on a command – a little bit more respect from his teammates in the locker room and on the field just because when they know his story and what he's been through? Well, I don't think there's any question that, uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, number one, uh, I've been doing this a long time as a player and a coach. You know, respect, first of all, is earned through what kind of player you are. And the guy's a good football player. And he plays the quarterback position. He can make all the throws. So that that's number one where you command respect. And then it, then it goes back to the second part of that is the kind of person you are. And they see the kind of guy is, the kind of what he's been through, what his history has been with three ACLs uh, and what he's had to deal with and what he's had to fight back from. And it's like Nick Muse looked at me one day and said, this guy's been through – uh, three ACLs, I've been through one. I can't imagine, you know, what he's been through. So there's no question uh, his experience and his history uh, does command respect. Well, Will, are you still rotating Colin and Ryan on a daily basis with the ones? Yeah, yeah they w we're, they're getting even reps. One reps with the first group uh, one day, the other one does it the next day. And then we're have mixing, mixing day, Luke in have there. Have you seen any daylight in that competition? Not at this time. I, mean, I think Saturday would be good to get off the field and let them go out and uh, administer the offense and, and run the offense, and, and we'll, we'll go from there. Is there a timeline for where the rotation has to stop and you have to have one guy get in the bulk of the snaps? Well, obviously there will be at some point. Mike and I haven't talked about that. Uh, but, you know, again, with the situation that we're going into, we need to be very fluid in what we're doing, and everybody needs to be ready to go. Colin? Well, I guess the NCAA came out and said that players get another year of eligibility. Um, I'm just curious kind of how that impacts roster construction, you know, additions maybe in the recruiting class. How do you kind of go about that building a roster knowing that you could potentially have every guy on this team back next year? 
Well, I think, you know, Colin, what we first did was I called, you know, I had George Wynn call Chance Miller, who's assistant athletic director, but also was in compliance to come to our players and explain exactly the verbiage of the ruling from the NCAA, which in essence says if you're a freshman now and you play in 10 games, 12 games, 15 games, 18 games, whatever you play in, you're going to be a freshman. Your clock is not going to be affected as far as that. If you're a senior, you're going to be a senior next year. So nothing will be affected as far as your clock is concerned. And I think our guys understood that. Um, I, I think it's a great ruling from the NCAA because of all the uncertainty about where things are and who is playing and who's not playing. Um, you know, Parker White's already told me he's putting his name on the, on the stadium. He said, Elliot Fry needs to get ready. It's coming off. So I think Parker plans on being here for a couple of years. Um, some of them have, have expressed to me, depending on how this year goes, how this fall, how I play, I'd love to come back, and I'd love to have them all back. So uh, I think that you got some guys that are graduating or and some guys that have graduated that want to work on a second degree, that want to work on a master's degree. Uh, that's that's been expressed to me on with, with several guys. But again, that's all you know will be handled down the line. What we haven't discussed and what what ruling has not happened is you know how how do we count the scholarships moving forward? I would assume that we will do something very similar to what they did with the spring sports to discount the senior class and count your 85 minus your senior class. So I, I, I'm assuming that will happen, Colin, but that decision has not been made yet. David? Well, have you heard anything about Jalen Brooks' waiver? Everybody's complimentary about him in practice, but have you heard anything if he could play this year? No, we have not. I, I don't know that we've submitted it yet. Uh, that, that, that There is a process to that to make sure that you – uh, you know, no different than Nick Muse last year. I think we're, we're obviously a little early than we were with Nick as far as the time that we have in front of us. Uh, but he'll continue to rep, but we have not heard anything. Ben? Uh, two questions. First, is Shy working more inside or outside? And, and how much have you seen him grow and develop, you know, from, from the guy who came on campus uh, four years ago? <laughs> I've seen him grow and develop a lot. Uh, to be able to sit in the leadership meeting this morning and look at him and say, we need you to hold some guys accountable at your position, you know, which I don't know that I would have said that, you know, three years ago uh, to Shy. Uh, but he's continued to come on. I think he's having a good camp. Uh, and he's playing every position at the receiver position. Hill? I'm just talking to some of the guys a little while ago about them buying into the idea of just leading that boring life that you've been preaching. How reassuring is it for you and, and the rest of the staff that, to know that, that the guys are, are you know, listening to that message and, and, and willing to, to buy into that? Well, I think that, I, you know, our, we always talk about ownership in our organization and, and the, the really good teams I've been a part of. Um, the, the, the coaches was, were just the stewards of the ship, and we just guided where we were going, and, and really the players, you know, controlled – the discipline they controlled uh, the, the the team, and I and that's what I've seen from a lot of these guys, especially the older guys, uh, of making sure the younger guys, for the first time, some of these young guys have been to college, and sometimes probably as we all, and I'll be the first one to say, didn't make great decisions as a you know as a, as a young college student, uh, and we're just at a different di day and time. Uh, the guys got to make great decisions right now, and they got they need to understand that they're. The impact of their decision doesn't, you know, could mean be very detrimental to a senior, to a, someone that's been in our program for a long time, and all of a sudden one poor decision leads to someone being quarantined for two weeks, which is a long time in football. So, uh, again, th those are things that uh, we continue to talk to our guys about, but I think our leadership group's done a really good job of continuing that message in the locker room and to hear a lot of our guys' comments in terms of leading a boring life uh, says that the point is getting across. I uh, hope it's getting across to everybody. Let's go to Josh. Well, uh, when you look at guys who have followed the path that Jabari Ellis appears to be on, which is to say not a lot of contributions for two or three years even, and then starting or playing a lot as a senior, is there a common thread that those guys have or exhibit or part of that process? Well, Jabari played a bunch for us last year. I don't, I'm, and I'm, I don't know about starting. I'm, and maybe he did or he didn't. But he was a. At the end of the last season, he was a really good football player for us. 
He was extremely disruptive. He could hold the point. He rushed the passer well. Um, you know, we all mature in different stages. And, uh, and it was funny you asked the question. I walked by Jabari the other day before our fifth practice, and I said, think about day one practice and compare it about where you are now. You know, would you, would you have ever thought? He said, no. Nah. He said, but I, I was going to stay the course. I know that. So, again, he's a guy that's, you know, continued to work through it and didn't get frustrated, didn't throw the ball in, didn't blame a coach, didn't blame another player, and continued to improve himself. And you got to credit Jabari Ellis with that. I mean, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a talent to me, to have a guy that's willing to per persevere and, and, and push and battle through adversity and battle through not playing as much as you want to play. Uh, you know, and no one wants to go through that. But the guy now has really developed himself into being a good football player and uh, really proud of him and how he's handled the whole situation. Mike, Mike Uba. Uh, Coach, I know you've said over these last couple of weeks that you like the idea of being able to spread things out in, in terms of camp. It's still 25 days of practice. But as you guys go into this scrimmage, being able to continue to adjust to all these different challenges, the face guards, the shields on the sideline, um, how much do you think that will help in, in terms of being able to get these guys ready? And then going into a scrimmage like this, how much are you guys going to try to make it as, as real, uh, as close to a game as, as possible to get that feel? Well, anytime we step in the stadium at williams Bryce, we're going to make it as game day as we can. So we'll have game uniforms uh, that we'll be wearing uh, for this fall. Um, you know, the uh, defense will be in one uniform, the offense will be in another. And the next time we go in the stadium, it'll be the same operation. Uh, game helmets will be used. I mean, we'll, we'll go through no nothing different from game day as far as when we step in the stadium. Uh, we may do a little bit more practice to st before we start the scrimmage. Uh, we haven't decided that yet. I haven't decided that yet. But we're going to look at that as a staff this afternoon to figure out what we need to do and what's best for our team. And we need a lot of guys to get looks because, again, like we, we, we got to we've got to have some depth as we as we enter the season and a little bit in the unknown here. Uh, of what we're going through. And, and we've got to have as, as much depth as we can create on our football team. John Del Bianco. Hey, well, how's Jamar Brown factoring in at safety? Yeah. And how have John Dixon and Cam Smith looked in their battle at, at cornerback? Yeah, J uh, Jamar's doing a good job at the safety position. He's also playing the dime linebacker for us, which gives us some flexibility, creates depth for our team, but you know, might be our best combination of of people on the field at this time uh, when he's playing at the dime. Very athletic and play in space. He's got instincts to play in the box. Uh, we're going to continue to get him more reps there. But I think, again, the safety position, we put a lot on those guys as far as you know, verbiage and making calls and getting the calls communicated and having urgency and some things that he just – we haven't ever asked him to do. But I think he's handling those things very well through, through the first six. We've got to continue to progress. You know, Cam and John have, are going to provide us to be very flexible in the secondary. Uh, both guys have had some really bright moments in the first six days. Uh, both guys need to be more consistent in their playmaking and their physicality of play. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of condensed formations, uh, our league has kind of evolved to that uh, in making corners tackle. And those guys got to be more physical on the edges to tackle better. But both guys have demonstrated some very good coverage ability, especially in the red zone yesterday. Our offense went after John a little bit, and uh, he responded the right way. I mean, he made some plays on the ball. I'm very proud of how he, how he handled that. Uh, Cam has done some nice things as far as making some plays on the ball. But both guys have had a good camp so far. Mitch Brown. Coach, obviously uh, the news of Jacob Blake has been in the news cycle here the past 48, 72 hours. What have the conversations been like uh, as you guys continue uh, the conversations that you had a couple of months ago uh, in the locker room? Well, I met with the leadership group today, and we, we had some discussion, not necessarily about that specific incident. Uh, I have not seen the, the film. Uh, I haven't seen any footage of it. My wife, uh, I think it was two nights ago, uh, I came home and she she told me what had the horrific situation there in Wisconsin and what had happened, and uh, and again I, it's a it's a senseless situation that uh, I, I don't know enough about it to be honest with you right now other than what my wife briefed me on when I came home. So I don't want to comment any further, further than that other than we have had some discussions within our, our, our staff is concerned with it. And uh, as we continue to move forward, we're going to support our players as best we can. Uh, the best thing we can do is to, to put it in our players' hands, in our hands as far as voting and putting the right people in office to make, to make the right decisions to represent our country. John Whittle. Uh, yeah, 
T Rod last week, and then some of the players today mentioned that uh, going against Mike Bobo's offense is is really a challenge from a uh, a multiple formation standpoint and, and just keeping them on their toes is what you've seen from the offense just schematically kind of what you envisioned from Mike at this point? Yes, I think that, you know, uh, and obviously facing Mike at Georgia, totally different from some things he did at Colorado State. And it's probably a mixture of both, I would say. Uh, but do, it gives you a lot of different eye candy as far as motions and shifts are concerned. Uh, you got to be able to leverage formations on him, uh, and, and, and it creates some issues, creates some match, mismatch issues as far as those things are concerned. But I'm very pleased with what, how we're, we're progressing offensively uh, schematically as far as those things are concerned. And they do, John, give you a lot of issues as far as those things are concerned and being able to leverage formations and, uh, and, and understand you know, defensively some of the things you've got to go through and adjust out uh, against some of the matchups he creates. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any offensive coordinator you'll go against it on this schedule that's that's like Mike, but are, are you pleased with the way your defensive players have, have responded to that challenge? Yeah, I, mean, I think our guys, you know, part of the uh, the evaluation process in recruiting is competitive edge. And you want guys that want to go compete and get after it. And I think that as we've continued to uh, recruit here, we've recruited more guys that have that competitive edge that you got to have to be successful. And uh, and I, I've been pleased with how our guys have competed. Now we got to keep our composure a little bit in some situations, and we've had some guys lose their composure, uh, you know, at practice. Which, you know, that's good and bad. At the end of the day, it's training camp. Uh, you're you're tired of beating on each other. You get frustrated. Uh, but you've got to be. A, we want to be a violent, composed football team. And when you lose your composure, you have a hard time making really good decisions as a player as far as those things are concerned. So that's something we'll continue to work on. Colin? Well, kind of two questions. Um, in terms of players opting out, have you had any more? And I guess what's the process, say, if Jordan Rhodes or Mark Fox says they want to come back? How does that process work? And what have you seen from Luke Doty um, during practice and – do you envision a package of some sort for him now that there's no real, I guess, redshirt rule this year? Um, uh, going back to the opt-out, I mean, that, that's, those are conversations that will stay between us. And I, to my knowledge, if a player decides to come back, he can at any time. Uh, and certainly either one of those players would be more than welcome to come back. Uh, but, but I certainly respect and understand their decision. Uh, make sure we're clear on that. Um, you know, as far as Luke was concerned, we've never had any discussion about redshirting. Uh, he was going to play. Uh, and Mike has been extremely pleased with his progression at the quarterback position uh, as well as at the, re at the receiver position. Again, we've said it before, he's one of the best athletes on our team, and, and we need to find ways to get him on the field. He's got a great competitive, ed competitive edge. He practices really hard. He runs 4-4, uh, you know, and he throws the ball extremely well. So y'all can keep talking about wildcat and all that. That's good. Let's let all the defensive coordinators think we're going to be in a wild cock formation when he's back there because he can throw the ball extremely well too. Ben Briner. Um, well, one of your guys mentioned uh, George Wynn kind of describing the situation that you guys are trying to put players in as, as being in a bubble. Do you, is that a word you use and is that kind of a, a situation and mindset you're sort of trying to imprint on the guys or not really? Well, we, you know, George has done an, um, you know, just a, he and Clint Haggard have been, both been really good at the protocols that we have in place. And it's amazing the people around the country that are calling them to find out what we're doing. And you got to credit George and Clint in, in all situations. But, um, you know, that's something that we've kind of referred to our guys about. And, and we, we can't necessarily put you in a bubble, but you need, to, you need to approach your life that way. You need to be at your 650 Lincoln, uh, only around people you know, not around any strangers, no exposure to the unknown. You need to be in our building. Uh, we're feeding you all the food as far as those things are concerned. Uh, and, and as we continue to say, lead a very boring life. Uh, and if we'll, that is what we refer to as the bubble. And if you're not putting yourself with exposure to the unknown, uh, you know, we feel like we can be pretty successful, you know, battling this, this virus. Mike Gillespie. Unmute yourself. Hey, there we go. Uh, so to that end, Coach, um, just wondering, you know, on game days, you know, for a player, how different will it look 
and feel and how are you guys kind of trying to mitigate you know like contact between other players on game days and and i guess from a fan perspective too how different will it look do you guys plan on on spacing out the players a little bit more on game days or uh is it too early to kind of have those conversations um i know that there's some protocols in place that we haven't quite frankly talked about uh how you know i don't think there'll be a whole lot of interaction with fans at all uh, which is unfortunate but that's that's the situation that we're in right now um you know, as far as the sidelines concerned, our guys will all be required if they don't have their helmet on to have a some form form of a face covering uh, on the sideline. We have talked to our guys about that, and that'll be in place when we when we go over to the stadium on Saturday. Uh, we actually going to have a staff meeting this afternoon at four o'clock to discuss a lot of these issues that George Wind is going to update us on on what are the protocols for game day, uh, for the sideline procedures and those things, so we can start working on them. Uh, on Saturday, so our players will not be shocked by anything that we uh, ask them to do on game day. Last call for questions for Coach. If not, I don't see anything. Oh, John Whittle with the last question of the day. Go ahead, John. Do you unmute yourself? yourself. Hey, what, what do you think of Coach Fink's beard? What's that? What do you think of Coach Fink's beard? No, you couldn't even see it when he had his mask on. His mask comes all the way to his earlobes, so I couldn't see it. So I, I think it's an improvement. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have a great day.